a lot of people really struggle with identifying lung sounds. In this video, we're gonna go over what they sound like so you can get better at identifying them. I'm Dave from Medic Test Secrets, and I'm here to teach core NREMT concepts so you can dominate your NREMT exam and you can be a more confident paramedic or EMT. So in this video, we're gonna cover the five most common lung sounds and the three lung sounds that a lot of people just get wrong. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'm gonna leave you with five tips that'll make it much easier to hear lung sounds. Accurate interpretation of lung sounds is an essential part of the overall assessment, but especially your respiratory assessment. In the end, lung sounds help us direct our treatment course by giving us clues about the overall problem that the patient is suffering. First, we have clear lung sounds. Now, clear lung sounds are usually soft and low with a good, strong, turbulent airflow. And this is what normal lung sounds sound like. Second, we have wheezes. Wheezes are a high-pitched musical sound that can be heard on inspiration or expiration and are caused by a constriction of the bronchioles. Wheezing is common with asthma, COPD, and bronchitis. Here is wheezing. Third, we have ronchi. Now, ronchi occurs when air is blocked or disrupted in the large airways. Ronchi is often caused by uh, increased mucus in the airways and is common with bronchitis and pneumonia. This is what ronchi sounds like. Number four, we have rails. Now, rails are a small clicking, bubbling, popping sound that is usually heard in the lower airways. Rails can be fine, coarse, moist, or wet. Rails are common with pulmonary edema, CHF, infection, and inflammation. And this is what rails sound like. Number five, we have decreased or absent lung sounds. Now, decreased or absent lung sounds can be caused by a variety of respiratory illnesses or diseases, but it's really important that we don't confuse absent lung sounds with clear lung sounds. Now, this is something that I've seen happen a lot of times where somebody will listen to lung sounds and they'll say, oh, their lung sounds are clear, right? And when we verify this, we actually hear that the lung sounds are absent because the patient is extremely obstructed and has barely any airflow. Absent lung sounds are an ominous finding. Now, after initiating treatment for absent lung sounds, sometimes we may hear adventitious lung sounds like wheezing after, which is actually a good thing. So I promise you, if you stay till the end, I would give you five tips so you can hear lung sounds better and have more accurate interpretation. So number one, we want to place the stethoscope directly on bare skin. Any barrier like clothes or a jacket between the stethoscope and the breath sounds will cause distortion or make it more difficult to hear. Number two, I know this is hard in the field, but we want to try to reduce ambient noise. If you listen to lung sounds in a house and it's kind of hard to hear, then just listen again in the truck. Turn the heat off, the AC off. Try to reduce that ambient noise as much as possible. Tip number three is to listen to a lot of normal breath sounds. The more you listen to, the easier it is to identify normal. And when you get better at identifying normal, it'll be easier to identify the abnormal breath sounds. Tip number four is to hold the stethoscope firmly in place. Again, if you're holding it loosely on the skin and it's moving up against the skin a little bit, you can get some distortion, which makes it more difficult to hear. And tip number five, quality matters. It's important to have a good quality stethoscope. You don't have to have a four or $500 stethoscope, but spend the extra money to get a better stethoscope and you will be surprised by how much clearer 
whatever the breath sounds sound to you. So leave me a comment below. Let me know which breath sounds you struggle with identifying the most. You know, lung sounds are just a part of the overall patient assessment. But when we look at the overall patient, it is extremely important to recognize when these adventitious lung sounds are leading to a much bigger or more ominous outcome or problem with our patient. We want to make sure that we quickly get ahead of a patient who's deteriorating from respiratory distress to respiratory failure. And you can watch this video here where I cover how you can know the difference.